Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host for Go Local Prov, Laura Afonso, and we are live here at the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center in downtown Providence. And we are starting off our food segment this week with a very special guest, Miss Julie Ann Sagir, also known as Julie Tabuli. Julie, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Of course, of course. Now, Julie, you are you are basically the the queen of Lebanese cuisine. You have your Julie uh, Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen uh, aired nationally on PBS. You are an award-winning author. So really kudos to you um, and thank you so much for joining us today to talk about uh, your cooking experiences. Oh, thank you Laura for having me and hello everyone in Rhode Island and yes. New England. I'm really happy to be joining you all today. So. Of course, of course. So let's start talking about um, how you got to where you are today um, and how your experiences led to you um, becoming this, this uh, queen of Lebanese cuisine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a very long story, but I'll try to give you a short, yes. abbreviated version. Um, it was actually in the summer of 2007. Uh, I was staying a month-long uh, visit with my, through my grandmother, my mom's mom. Uh, in Lebanon. Uh, I was born in the United States of America, mm -hmm. first generation and full-blooded uh, Lebanese American. Uh, so it was my first visit to Lebanon and, um, and meeting uh, my aunts and my cousins and um, a lot of family members I had never ever met before wow. and obviously being in, in Lebanon for the very first time. So it was really that experience I didn't, I didn't know it while I was there. But upon my return, um, it was really, I, I always said, I dream of this dream for me, God did, like, that I, I found my calling. It was like, okay, I'm going to teach people how to make Lebanese and Middle Eastern, uh, Mediterranean, respectively, cuisine, yeah. and um, I'm going to be the representative for it. And at the time, with the inception of, like, 2007, I was working on what I wanted to do in 2008. There was, there was no representation right. um, of uh, really little, I would say. I don't want to say no, but very little representation of um, my culture's cuisine, um, you know, here in the U.S. So, yeah. uh, so off I went. <laughs> right. Well, what a great story, really being able to take your very rich culture and share it with the, with the whole country and being able to um, have all of us be able to experience a little bit of Lebanon right in your kitchen. I mean, that's what I really wanted to do. I knew that people loved our food and our, yes. you know, the people. I always came across people that had, you know, wonderful Lebanese neighbors or, or you know, college roommates or um, just different friends, you know, of theirs. And they loved the food. They just didn't know the first thing about making it, mm -hmm. um, you know, where to begin. And that's where I came in. I, I started off with I want to teach people. Yes. That was really like my short mission statement. I want to teach people how to make Lebanese cuisine and that's how I started. I started teaching cooking classes. I mm -hmm. moved back from New York uh, to the Finger Lakes region where we are now, um, beautiful agriculturally rich area and I started teaching cooking classes. Um, and actually this first, this April will be 10 years since I launched uh, Julie Tabuli. I wow. launched in, officially in 2009. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so you've had a great run of sharing these uh, these uh, recipes with the, with all of us. So thank you so much. And I, and I was um, doing a little bit of reading out about you in your uh, initial segment of your cookbook. Um, and I loved that you said you, you were watching these, uh, you know, chefs that may not have been Lebanese, but they were making um, traditional Lebanese recipes. And you're like, that's not how you do that. Like, you know, being able to share your own experiences from home, from your mom, um, and being able to and have the right approach or, or the most authentic approach to cooking these dishes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's great that, um, you know, all different chefs and, and cooks um, want to explore different cultures. Yeah. I encourage that. Um, for me, you know, growing up Lebanese, living, breathing, eating Lebanon, you know, uh, and, all, and all things Lebanese, you know, I really wanted it to come from an authentic place you know, from my grandmother to my mom, you know, third generation, passed down, you know, and I really wanted to make not only my family proud, but I felt, uh, you know, a lot of responsibility in terms of, like, I was representing my culture Definitely. in the country of Lebanon, and I wanted to be the very best that I could of authentically making our food, you know, uh, yes. the traditional, the traditional recipes, um, but introducing them in a fresh way. 
you know, uh, to my American audiences. So, Definitely. so yeah, so it was, um, I'm just very proud to, to be able to do this, you know, and continue to do it. So. Yes. And I love your motto, fresh is best. So talk to me a little bit about how you incorporate freshness um, and wholesome uh, mentality into your cooking. Uh, geez, um, oh my gosh. I mean, it just really is who I am and, and how I grew up eating. My mom always had a garden, um, you know, since, since we, you know, since I was a baby and, and just always out there, you know, seeing her gardening. And so, it, and again, coming from my grandmother in Lebanon, having gardens and we had orchards in Lebanon and, you know, growing everything ourselves, homegrown, yes. you know, so it really is just inherent. And I, um, and that's what I've always known. So, um, you know, and I love the way it makes me feel when I eat fresh foods um, pretty much every day. I really do not eat anything that's, you know, um, frozen or, right. you know, um, just loaded with like preservatives and all and, of those and, like yucky uh, things that we don't need. We can leave those all out. <laughs> right. And the food, the fresh food really fuels you and gives you just like such great energy. And I wanted to incorporate because that's who I am. So it was just natural for me to you know, make that part of my Julie Tripoli brand and Fresh is Best. And obviously both names are very easy to remember. Of so, course. Um, <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. And they kind of drive, you know, everything that I do, you know, and, and not only the foods that I prepare with in terms of Fresh is Best, but I feel like my approach, my style of cooking, the way that I present myself, you know, um, it's, uh, I hope to be like an inspiration and in my fresh outlook you know, on life and on cooking and, and sharing with others, you know, so of course. It, it transcends beyond the food. You Absolutely. Know, <laughs> and how very fitting because February is American Heart Month. Um, and we all know that we want to keep a healthy heart by having, you know, fueling our body with wholesome foods. So how very fitting that, you know, fresh is best can fit in with American Heart Month. I know, I'm wearing red for <laughs> Amazing. Um, American Heart Month and Go Red for Women and also men. Yes. I mean, with, you know, uh, heart disease and strokes and just all of these, you know, other really major health concerns uh, looming in our country. It's just really wonderful to be able to offer, you know, my cooking show and my cookbook filled with fresh, healthy, heart healthy, I should say, wholesome Mediterranean, you know, foods. Often, you know, we hear about Mediterranean foods diet and Mediterranean mm. way of life and Lebanese cuisine really follows uh, and, and really is a leader, you know, not just following really in, in terms of living and, and eating a, a Mediterranean lifestyle, mm. um, it's mostly plant-based, yes. you know, vegetables, legumes, um, you know, beans, chickpeas, um, you know, little animal fat, a lot of olive oil, fresh lemon and herbs. So yes. it really does, you know, it really does, um, fit in with people, those that are really trying to change their lifestyle a little bit here and there, and or also just going, okay, let me really start eating a Mediterranean way, mm. you know, and trying to trying to make healthier choices. So Absolutely. hopefully my book can help out with that. <laughs> of course. So tell me a little bit about Mama. Your mother is very, very involved with so much of what you do, whether it's on the show and being an inspiration, being a mentor. Tell me about the involvement of your mother and how she acts as an inspiration for you. Yeah, she's everything like oh, yes. oh. <laughs> um yeah I mean she's obviously my 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 mother my my mentor my master chef she taught me everything I know I went straight to her when I you know sought to do what I'm doing now and I said you, have, you know please teach me everything you know and and more and then some and, and every day I'm still learning you know that, that's what I love there's there's no like you know um, there's no limit but yeah she's very involved um not only with, with teaching me, you know, the, the real way to, to cook Lebanese, but obviously um, she's involved on the show. She's known as Mama in Mama's Glorious Garden. Yes. She grows this abundant, beautiful. Uh, we, we try to um, showcase it as beautifully as possible in the program, but physically being in it is just breathtaking and um, it's really labor of love for her and so uh, it's just massive she goes everything under the sun literally and um, I get to go and source all my <laughs> ingredients yes uh, not only for the show for the book and just for me creating new recipes all the time and um, I'm just thankful that I have her and be able to share her you know with um, with viewers of my show and um, so in, in her garden segments that we uh, that we have in the program. So yeah, she's I honestly couldn't be able to do any of this without her. And 
mean that. <laughs> that is just very, very special. I, we all love our mothers, and I wish I could have my mom with me at work sometimes. So it must be really, really awesome for you um, to have that relationship with her and be able to welcome her, you know, into your kitchen onto the stage of your cooking platform, and and really be able to incorporate her into that with her with her garden. That's just so amazing. And I love that you get to step outside of the kitchen and go outside into the garden and, and incorporate all of those fresh ingredients right right from the earth into the kitchen. and um, definitely one with mother nature and I, I get all my inspiration from the garden and from the ground and from the you know farmers around here and the lake I love the water and so I just I love that was a big part for my creation of my show was yes. that I just I wanted to be out and about and bring the viewers along with me and then come back into the kitchen kind of in and out you know um, and uh, not just be in the kitchen solely because I mean really that's not that's not really how you're cooking anyways, you know, right, how one's right. cooking, you know, of you're course. going out and you're sourcing your ingredients, you know, so, um, and for me, it's, I start with, I start with the garden first, yes. I start with the garden and the farmer's markets and the farmers, and then I, then I go into the pantry, so, um, uh, yeah, so. That is exciting. just so wonderful, <laughs> yes. And so from the cooking show birth to the cookbook. So I have a copy of it right here. Thank you so much for sending me this lovely, this is an absolutely beautiful cookbook. And it's filled with so, so many recipes um, that you were able to craft yourself. So tell me a little bit about your award-winning cookbook. Oh, thank you. It's my baby. Yes. <laughs> uh, it really, it, I mean, a, just sort of a labor of love. And of I, I feel like a culmination of, um, since I started nearly, you know, coming on to 10 years, um, I really wanted to be able to create what I feel is the best Lebanese cookbook, you know, and, and also Middle Eastern and, and Mediterranean. Um, I, I started out with a lot more recipes, um, to be honest, and then, wow. you know, kind of it and it, I didn't want it to be too overwhelming. Um, and so really try to some of, you know, my all-star recipes, but then some other recipes that are really, um, you know, from from my grandmother in, in Lebanon, uh, very traditional. Some yes. some things you wouldn't see. You know, I'm um, not the the quote unquote popular ones. You know, um, yes. and just some really kind of uh, hidden gems I wanted to bring um, into the book, and just really be you know me and in my story and in my recipes, and and every one of the recipes has you know has a special story. Um, and uh, my wonderful photographer, Alexandra, um, so talented. She came from New York. Here, I cooked everything in the book myself. Um, Amazing. And that's a lot. A major assistant of Mama. Yes. And, um, plated, and we, you know, uh, got everything just naturally together. It was actually shot right here, wow. uh, right in the kitchen. Right in the kitchen. All natural, all natural lighting, which yes. we want. Yeah, we wanted it to just feel very real, you of know, course. and have, and hopefully my soul cut through the photos, which I think Alexandra did such a beautiful. She captured it very, very nicely. And you have such great authentic recipes in there, and I'm really looking forward to try making um, your rice pudding. Um, I myself am Portuguese, and rice pudding is something that I make with my own mother. She's taught me how to make a traditional Portuguese recipe, so I'm really excited. I think I'm going to make it with my mom um, in her kitchen, um, something we can do together. So tell me a little bit about your rice pudding recipe and how it's special and, and how you made it your own. Um, I really came from, I, I really like thick and creamy rice pudding, and so I, uh, you know, wanted to use the aborio, the Italian short grain um, rice to get that consistency and that achievement with it, um, so that is something that you wouldn't traditionally see, you know, um, in a Lebanese rice pudding, um, tend to be a little bit more loose. Right. Um, and also you find more like floral, like rose water and things like that, that with a, um, you know, Lebanese style rice pudding. So mm. I love the vanilla bean, the real true vanilla bean. So I incorporated that. And then as toppings, I have the pistachio nuts and yes. the rose water syrup. So I kind of, you know, twisted it a little bit and made it my own. It's still very much authentic, of but course. I just added my own, um, you know, love of other ingredients to it. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I, d I cannot wait to try it and see, you know, how it differentiates from, you know, what I have grown up knowing and, and be able to have a taste of another culture. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. I mean, 
you to make with your mom too. Thank it's you. Really a nice treat. And it's not it's not that sweet. I have I do have a sweet chapter yes. um, on dessert in my book. Um, and you know, oftentimes, I mean, so many people say to me when they have my sweets, whether it's my you know Lebanese balawa or baklava yes. or you know, filo doughs and all different things, they always tell me that it's not really that sweet. And and that's intentional. I don't right. really like my sweets to be that you know, sweet where you can't take more than one bite, you right. know, so, um, you want to be able and, to you know, enjoy it. Sweets, yeah. And the sweets we have on special occasions, it's not something that we eat, um, like every, every day during the week after, after a meal, you know, so they're, they're more for, you know, special occasions, Valentine's day, cooking with your mom, a little sweet treat, things like that. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited that you're going to make it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'll let you, I'll have to let you know how it turns out. <laughs> Um, so my one last question before we wrap up with you, Julie. Um, some of the Mediterranean flavors that you cook with, what kind of spices should we keep stocked in our kitchen if we're going to be making a lot of these kind of Lebanese cuisines? I love this question. Um, yeah, your Lebanese pantry, definitely you need really good quality tahini. Yes. Uh, so you can make all of the maza, the hummus, and the baba ganoush, and uh, the fete, like all these different, you know, uh, spreads that we have. Um, I love uh, za'atar, or uh, za'atar, um, we call it uh, that signature Lebanese uh, thyme and sumac and sesame seed spice. Also, on that note, sumac spice, Ooh, okay. uh, which has a lemony uh, flavor to it as well. That's in patouche in the salad, and you can sprinkle it on eggs and a lot of wow. other recipes. Um, all spice for sure, just a nice... Um, well-balanced allspice. It has a nice warm flavor to it with some of my soups and stews. Very nice. Um, and good sea salt, good of olive course. oil. You have to have those good quality. Lemons, because I use, I was going to say, I have, a, I have a colander of lemons here. Um, <laughs> lemons are my everything. I'm, yeah. So Put them on everything. For dry pantry, but if you have good, fresh, I use fresh lemon juice for everything. So no, keep them no stocked. Bottled lemon keep them in the stuff. pantry, keep them in the kitchen. Great spice rack, some lemon, some olive oil. You're pretty much good to go to make these really awesome Lebanese dishes. Absolutely. And I use tons of herbs. So if yes. you think a little herb garden, I mean, herbs aren't everything. You know, I use uh, fresh mint and uh, parsley and chives, thyme. Um, those add a lot of flavor. So if you can get some, some herbs or a little herb garden going, you know, get some inspirational spring. Of course. <laughs> in your yes. Kitchen. So... Yeah. Awesome. Well, Julie, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us all of this great insight um, into your kitchen and, you know, giving us some thoughts and ideas of, of different ways that we can try our own authentic Lebanese cooking right at home. Oh, my pleasure. Of course. So and much. again, congratulations on um, your awards, on the, both on the cooking show and on the cookbook. We're just really excited for you. Thank you so, so much. Take all right. Care. Julie, thanks so much. And don't go anywhere because we have our second guest coming right up. We'll be back in just a minute.